Hello my friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are painting another winter themed painting and another birch tree themed painting. So I did a painting, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, where it was an oval and there were trees and it was like this really cool contrast light dark painting and there was a deer uh, or a stag in the center and it looked quite nifty if I do say so myself and then I saw a painting of birch trees in the shape of an oval and I'll I don't remember who it was but I will link it in the description um, and I thought yes that's what I want to paint so what I'm doing is drawing myself an oval and uh, and we're gonna do just that. So I'm erasing most of this so that I have just the the oval shape that I want. Like so. Okay. And actually, before I did that, I should have drawn my trees. So we're going to have some birch trees coming out of this. And in the other painting, like they, there was some, um, it was like extending, the trees were extending beyond the circle. But with birch trees, it's kind of challenging to do that because they're they're white. So anyhow, I'm going to have one birch tree going like this. I'll have another one kind of going out like this way. And then another one like this. And then another one here. You can have as many as you want. I'm going to have four. Um, oh, I just realized something. <coughs> oh my gosh. Oh well. Okay. It's not relevant in this painting, but I, I filmed another birch tree tutorial today and I just realized I completely forgot to paint on those little black branches that... Um, that birch trees have, I might film a little addition. But anyways, so I just erased the pencil lines from the openings of the birch trees. And what are we going to do? Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to erase the lines of these trees. Oh. When I scrape my nail against the paper, it's like the worst sound. Because I don't want the watercolor to show through. So I'm erasing it just a tad. <clears throat> like so. And... Then we are going to take our, so you can use whatever color that you would like. This is the best part about this. Um, I'm using blue mixed with the blue that's already on my palette because I just don't really care uh, what kind of blue it is. And you're just going to be painting in all of the uh I guess cracks, not cracks, but the sections that aren't your birch tree. Now the thing is, I should not have erased this, this, uh, the oval as much as I did because I can't really see the outside border of it too well. So I'm going to have to kind of freehand it a little bit, just switching to a thinner brush so I can get in these tiny little grooves. 
like so. Okay. A lot of these cards that I've been painting for February and for the winter months in general, they would do really well as Christmas cards as well. So I know that when this one is released, Christmas will have already passed, but it's certainly something you can bookmark and use in um, for Christmas next year, if you wish. So I'm running out of the pigment that I had here, which is not good because I mixed it with like a, a blue that was already there. So this blue is not going to be the same. That's okay. Sometimes things just work out so nicely. <laughs> I really like how this oval is turning out, and that's why it's so important to pencil it out for yourself first. By the way, um, I'm, I'm just going to start saying this on, if I remember, on all tutorials. Whoops, that should not have happened, but whatever. We'll fix that later. Um where I use the pencil to trace things out. I just used a regular pencil because it looks like it's some fancy special writing or sketching device, but it's just a pencil. Um, it's just, I, the reason it looks like it does is because it's it was purchased in a tourist center uh, in Liechtenstein, which is a tiny country that I didn't know existed until I was physically in that country. Um, I bought it back when we were cycling through Europe, and it was just the cutest little thing. It had a little crown, it has a little crown on top, and, you know, typically when you buy little souvenirs like that, they kind of just get lost in your home, never to be seen again. But that pencil has been well used. And it's also a testament to how easy it is to sell products to people. Because, and I mean, I am not um, immune to this either. Like, my thing is watching like homesteading type videos and Whenever someone tells me they're using some special cast iron, I jump on that. <laughs> so I, I'm definitely not immune to the whole marketing thing on YouTube. But uh, yeah, it's just a pencil. Any pencil will do. So I'm just coming up to the last section here.
I had a comment on a video, like, somebody said, do you even like painting? Um, and it, I think it was because I was complaining a lot in that video because I was sick. Like, I was, I'd painted, because I pre-filmed so many tutorials so that when my baby was born I wouldn't have to worry about painting. I was painting a lot of those paintings when I was feeling really unwell from pregnancy. And I think I made it quite clear in my videos that that was the reason I was feeling unwell, but man, people just don't give you a break. Um, okay, we are done with that. Now you can go over it again, like a brighter color if you want and I kind of wish I had done that because this is now looking at it it's a little a little bit darker than I wanted it to be so I'm just taking like a baby blue and this is why I really like um, this palette by Grabby their paints are extremely opaque so it just paints over this like nobody's business. But now that I've done the one, I'm gonna have to do all of them. So you don't have to do this, I just wanted to make extra work for myself. You can, if you like the previous color, great. If not, you can certainly start with this one to begin with. Somebody in another video made a comment that they were annoyed that I spent, it was, I don't even remember what video it was, but they were annoyed that I spent the first half of the video painting something that eventually I completely erased and I started over or like I I painted over the whole painting and I kind of started over almost completely and it's funny how some of you really like that that I show the errors that I make in painting and how I fix them and some of you get really annoyed by that so I guess my advice would be to watch the painting, the tutorial in full first, so you know what to anticipate. Like, oh, look what I did here. I just smudged it. Sometimes I do things. I'm trying to transition this blue because I don't want to do the remaining two again. So I'm just trying to transition it so there isn't such a harsh difference between this blue and the rest, but I'm just going to quickly go over this. Apologies for wasting your time. Okay, now let's just quickly do this again. I'm going to have to go over this part with acrylic paint on this side. Okay, it is what it is. But I will fix it. I will fix it. I would have done like I would have made this a lot lighter to begin with because it's it's a, it's too dark for what I wanted it to be. But oh well. So let's let this dry and then we'll come back and paint our birch trees. Okay. So this should be dry. So now I'm gonna take black watercolor. And we're going to go ahead and start painting these birch trees. So, um, 
there's so many different ways to paint them, but I like to just focus on one side in terms of the border. Like this, and I won't even have it going the whole way. I'll just kind of have it peeking in and out. Maybe a little bit on this side. And then you can have those little um, cross. I do not like this paintbrush. I just got to stick with what I know. Tried and true. Um, so... I have these horizontal little like half thin moon shape things coming out and right now it doesn't look very good because we haven't completed the whole thing yet. Whoops, I went out of my little shape. And then you can go in with water and just blend out the color. So all I'm doing is applying water. And it's kind of smudging out that um, the black that I applied. So I'll do it again. And we're not done with that tree, by the way. So So I have a so many like, I think I have at least four birch tree tutorials on my channel. There's there's quite a few, so please go view those if I'm going a little too fast for you here. Um, just like I have a lot of tutorials that are specifically how to paint like this specific item so that you can apply it to landscapes or other tutorials. I try not to make instructions repetitive by teaching you how to paint birch trees on every single time I paint a birch tree like that's what those tutorials are there for and then you know you can reference them and apply what you learn to these sorts of paintings so I'm just kind of making I'm getting lazy I'm just doing lines and blotches because I know that I'm going to take water and uh, go over these and fade them out. Like so. And the last one here. So, yeah, what I didn't do in a previous tutorial, I don't know if I'm going to add it now because <laughs> I already filmed it and I don't want to 
add on, but I forgot to add those like black branches that come out of birch trees and that's what really makes them pop and stand out. Um, but before we do that in this painting, we aren't done with the inner details. So I'm going to start back at the first tree because it's most likely the most dried. And I'm just going and adding some more like very dark black features because we have smudged them out when we applied water the first time. And we want there to be some really dark um, features on these birch trees. And you can still smudge them out like this, for instance, uh, just to make them really stand out. Like so. can add those, I don't know what you would call them, like the wrinkles, the black wrinkles of a birch tree. I'm getting a little bit lazy here in how I apply the black because um, I know I'm going to smudge it out again. There we go. Okay. So right now it looks kind of iffy, but just wait, just you wait. We're going to add those tiny little, um, uh, twigs, I guess, that come out of birch trees. So I wish I made the background, like the blue part lighter because they would have stood out a lot more, but you want to start wherever you want, but on the, most ideally on the black kind of uh, knot part of the, the birch. And just have these little twigs coming out like so and you can have some you know coming out just from the complete side they don't have to come necessarily from the knots and just try to make your twig things as thin as possible because you want them to be very delicate and I think I overdid it here with the number that I <laughs> that I have, so just, you know, go crazy if you want to, but if you want it to look a little more realistic, perhaps don't do as many as I've done here. So, and then the last one. Okay. 
Okay. I think we're good there. Again, I should have made this lighter. It would have looked a lot nicer, I think, but um, you can keep going with this, you know, as long as you want to add more dark features and kind of refine the, the details that you've added. But I think I'm going to stop there before this gets out of hand. One thing I'm tempted to do is like extend the birch tree on this side. Let me just try that. I might regret this. But we can extend it like this. Oops, I don't know if you saw that. I apologize if you didn't, but I extended it here and I'm gonna do it the same on this side, on the other tree on the opposite side like this. And then dip it in water and just extend it so it's like more of a shadowy extension like this. All right, and actually should probably add some darker black features there to not make it look, yeah, there we go. I'm kind of tempted to have a little branch coming out of here, but <clears throat> that might be overkill, so I'm not going to, but that is basically it. Please let me know what you think of this tutorial. Um, hit like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.